people. It is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with the New York Fashion Week vlog. And I'm already trying to get hydrated, so let me just take a sip of my water. Because you gotta be in peak performance, okay? Tip top condition to get out here in these fashion streets. It is the Fashion Olympics, as I like to call it. This will be my third New York Fashion Week. And I'm starting the vlog with a bit of a behind the scenes so you all can see how I get prepared for Fashion Week. Um, it may end up being two vlogs, we'll see. I am only going to New York, not doing Fashion Month, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But let's see the prep that goes into it. Let's start with the maintenance slash self-care routine. I got my nails done yesterday. Hands are abysmally ashy per usual. Um, and this is a dipping powder and it almost, I told her I wanted white, but it almost looks like a nude. Um, but I'm fine with that. Like it's, I think definitely going to be a nice neutral color and with dip it's hard tell me if y'all experience this as well to find someone who knows how to do them and they not be like thick like acrylic tips and i thought the thinness she did a really really good job so nails are done when i saw my dog lady clipper today to get them waves waving okay she gave me a nice sharp part on the side i've been filling the part for a while now and back in the day i used to get like a lot of designs and stuff uh i had like a full kind of um not a mohawk but i had a lot of hair up top and it was kind of tapered on the sides in the back and leslie used to give me all these designs in the back and i feel like since i've just gone short all over i haven't done a lot of designs so the part so She'll continue to be a staple. Um, and otherwise, I masked this morning, okay? I'm staying hydrated, as you saw. So I ran a few errands this morning after getting my hair cut. One of the things I did was I stopped by Zara. Uh, I am going to share with you what's in this bag as well as some other pieces. I find that for Fashion Week, my goal is to go whatever my style is and then take it up 10 notches, right? I live in the DC Metro, it's a very conservative place. And even for me as someone who has always loved fashion and been very fashion forward, I'm not always gonna put on the thing, the thing, the thing, right? fashion week gives me that opportunity and so I felt like I was missing a couple like backup stunt pieces and also I want to make sure I have all my accessories together so we'll go through that together and I also just give you the tea about fashion week in general um you know what my experience has been like the cost how you get invited to shows etc so y'all buckle in get ready for the New York fashion week vlog uh but let's first go through some of these fashions honey all right, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like Zara is always good for that last minute lick. Like that one thing you just need that's gonna set the outfit over the top, that one two piece, that one dress, the thing that you can put on with something else, and it's just gonna always come together. Uh, not where I necessarily shop for staples anymore, but definitely I think a good home for something that's kind of fashion forward at an affordable price, of course. Y'all already know that, we all know Zara. Um, and so, Denim has been trending. Denim is still trending. And I found, now I have not tried this on. We are gonna try this on together. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. But I can't be bothered with the lines nor the fitting room as are. So we just had to bring it home. It is this jean jacket, like screen printed shirt. And the shirt is kind of sheer. And it has a pair. First I saw the jeans or the pants. And I was like, what are these? Because they remind me of these Margellas that has like a denim screen printed on a pair of cotton pants. And the same thing is true here. This is not cotton. It's probably polyester. But they look like jeans. Look at that detail. It's crazy. And of course, I mean, we had to also get a pair of denim shoes. I mean, could we not? How could we not? And I'm surprised they actually had my size. I would probably... Oh, hell no. Thank God I sat down to film this. Do you know I have a size 41 and 39 in my hand? 
I'm a whole size 41, really a 42. What the hell am I gonna do with a size 39 boot? This is that bullshit I be talking about with Zara. I, I can't even, who can make that up? All right, taking a trip back to Zara. I shall try on the outfit with one boot until that time, okay? Um, now, chokers are a thing. I've been seeing the girls wear chokers. Janae always has the best chokers, Hello Lux. And um, I was like, oh, I wanna try that. But y'all know my thing is gold. I love gold accessories. And so I found, I didn't even try this on either because it's in the package. This like, this could either go really good or really, really bad. So let's try it on now. Cause this does not match this denim set obviously i'm actually not sure what this is going to be worn with but i was like let me just Ooh, okay okay vibes i think this is actually supposed to be on the side okay vibe just picture it sicily okay vibe i can see it and because it's fashion week and i can do the most right this is my jewelry drawer that y'all are seeing the top of i probably will also just hit them with the heat and do a big earring Ooh. rats on rats on rats come on all right i don't know what this is going to go with but this is what i mean right you want the pieces that are going to be standout pieces i think a lot about photographs that i'm taking i think about possibly being photographed by photographers who will then share those pictures to mainstream publications you just never know you never know and so having your accessories be something that's eye-catching is obviously a great investment for fashion week especially when it's something that you can see yourself wearing beyond this five day one week month long period no matter you know how long you were choosing to engage. And so uh, let me try this denim outfit on, PRB. All right, friends, so because it's Zara, we already know that they're sizing, hence the shoes. It's literally all over the place. Um, but also, I never know what size I need. And so I didn't realize that the pants are meant to have like a boot cut or a flare fit, which I don't exactly love. So let's see how this may or may not come together. Alrighty, that out of the way. The top is in a medium and it's so tight here. I, I don't, okay. And the pants are in a large, just so you all know a bit about the sizing. I only have one boot on because I only have one that fits my feet. Um, so I would probably do a white sunny. By the way, sunnies are what I feel like I'm still missing. And so I've just decided not to even try to find any more here. I'm probably just going to like stop by Bergdorf's tomorrow because I arrive at 2 and I don't have anywhere to be until 5.30. Um, probably do the white jock mousse bag if this ends up being a look. And then I got this white like furry coat. It was on sale at Nordstrom, but it is from Topshop. Okay, okay. Now with the with the coat, we might be doing some things. Come on, wait, let me, hold up. This is why I be saying a third layer. A third layer will get you where you need to go every time, girl. It can be a vest, it can be a scarf, it can be a hat. But you just need that final pop, that final push. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this might, it might be a moment. It might be a moment. I wish you all could tell me <laughs> whether or not it is. But I think either as an outfit that I actually end up shooting or wearing to a show or a backup outfit, you can't go wrong. Here we go. I'm gonna put y'all up here. Um. The boots were definitely more money than I would have wanted to spend, but the top and the bottom were fairly affordable. Um, so it's something that I think is fine just to take with me. And if I don't wear it, no harm, no foul, I will just return it. 
Um, but I love the way the pants fit. The pants definitely, again, this is a size large, um, have a really, really nice fit to them. I just don't know outside of Fashion Week how I would wear this again because I feel like it's missing something. Maybe especially because of where this top hits. Um, I feel like I need a, a vest or I don't know. Like I feel like I need, I would need something. So this is another outfit. I'm not gonna share the whole thing with y'all cause y'all will see it, I'm sure, in the vlog. But I like neon a lot with denim. So, no. You see that's too, it's too casual because of the fabric. I actually have this to go with something that's a lot more like dressing. So, these are the decisions that you're making, getting prepared in real time. I have been planning outfits, planning looks, planning everything around Fashion Week since November probably, but very seriously since the beginning of December. And so let's talk a bit more about what goes on at Fashion Week, how to get there and all those things. First things first, Fashion Week happens twice a year and it's usually called Fashion Month because the shows happen all over the world. The most well-known places are of course New York, London, Milan, Paris, all these kind of epicenters of fashion around the world. This will be my third New York Fashion Week. The first one I went to was a year ago. It was last February. Um, had a blast. And what I realized then, I think I had gotten invited to one show by an independent designer, um, is that it wasn't just about going to the shows for me. It was really about meeting people who I love, who I'm inspired by, meeting and making new friends. It felt like, and I've said this on IG, a black fashion family reunion. And I absolutely loved the vibe and so decided to go back do it again in September and September I went all out because the first time I said okay here's what it feels like to be a part of this let me just take um, some notes do my recon and I always had in the back of my head here's how I'm gonna want to do it the next time and for me it was being very clear about the amount of content that I wanted to push out and I feel like it is not by coincidence that post fashion week uh, fashion week was September once again by the beginning of October I had broken ground and like big numbers on all of my platforms so I had gone uh and and hit 50k on um IG I'm now at 65k so I think once you get to that point growth is much much faster I struggled for years to even get to 10,000 and I got to 10,000 I think November of 20... 20. It's not even two years later and I am at 65,000. Um, that may not be a lot of growth for some people, but I know for me and where I was, it was a lot of growth. And I think Fashion Week really like cemented my brand in a particular way that I needed. Um, I hit 40,000 on YouTube and I hit 10,000 on TikTok, like all back to back in quick succession. And so, um, it just... <laughs> It gave me the clout that I feel like I always deserved as a content creator because whether I have 10 followers or 10,000, the brand is still gonna brand, right? Like my creativity cannot completely be captured by a number in an analytic that somebody else owns, but different conversation for a different day. But finally, things were starting to mirror each other. And so that is one of the reasons why I keep doing it because I know that you all, the tribe goes up for the content. You all are really interested in seeing me with my friends like Janae, like Monroe, uh, seeing some people for the first time. Like I met um, Brown Girl Shay last time and she's now on YouTube. I met Jernika Mycia the last time. I mean, there are so many of us who are in this industry and that number is growing but this kind of work can be so isolating, right? Right now, I'm in my house alone talking to a camera. <laughs> That's it. 99.999% of the time, right? And so this is the time that you get to be in community with your peers. Um, so that's another reason, right? Being in community is why I do it. And I think for me, 
I consider what is my ultimate goal because we're going to get to the expense of this all in just a moment. I think to myself, what is my ultimate goal here? Uh, why am I making this investment? Why am I traveling? Why am I putting together looks? Am I really trying to get into the mainstream shows? If not, or if so, how do I get there? What's the why behind the behavior? <laughs> and the answer for me is very clear. I want to be in community with people who are black creators, people who look like me, people who understand the same cultural idiosyncrasies, the people who I can get tips from and I can be inspired by. I am an artist. Fashion is my art form and I really, really seek to create in a communal space. Um, being front row at a mainstream show, at a you know European luxury designer show, I wouldn't turn it down. I would say, God, I thank you. But I also say, God, I thank you for this opportunity, right? Um, because ultimately, what I get is that fashion is a modality. Politics and fashion exist to build community and sisterhood. Um, I do pitch to get into shows. Um, I went through the schedule and I saw all of the shows for the week. I decided which ones I would really appreciate going to, the ones, the brands I've already supported because I have pieces in my wardrobe by them. And and my admin team, I have an admin team who helps me a lot on the backside of my business, my brand. Um, they sent out pitch emails that talked about who I was, gave some background, um, shared my media kit, which talks about different places I've been featured, uh, gives my numbers, my reach, my engagement, all those things. And the first time we did that was last September. Nobody responded besides to say, sorry, no room at the end. This time we got a bite. And I'm so excited to share with you all that I was invited to the Alice and Olivia presentation. And uh, they also reached out and said that they wanted to dress me for the event. Lord, I'm running, trying to make 100 because Sopranos. 99 and a half won't do. Yes, girl. So, so excited, right? Because while I just said that I'm not disappointed if I don't get into any of the big name shows because I do have other goals outside of that. What I do recognize is when a mainstream brand, uh, a brand as recognizable as Alice and Olivia recognizes me, it means that, um, you know, I'm doing the daggone thing. And so I'm actually giving myself a pat on the back for that because a lot of blood, sweat, and tears has gone into it. Um, this is not something that happened overnight. Clearly, I've been making an investment in my in my platform for 11 years. And so I'm grateful. So um, today is Wednesday as I am filming. On Thursday, tomorrow, I will pull up in New York. Uh, I have this written down. I think Friday is the Alice and Olivia show. It might be Saturday. Um, and then they will give me a window of time to show up to um, their showroom to decide what it is I am going to wear. My mind is still blown, okay? My mind is still blown. Uh, another show that I will be attending is one called Adore Me. It was my favorite show from September. Um, it is a size-inclusive lingerie brand. I'll also be going to their gifting suite. Um, I have requested invitations to a few other shows using a website called GPS Radar. If you are interested in going to Fashion Week, I highly recommend hopping on that website. That's how a lot of us, especially those of us who are just starting to go to shows and who don't have relationships with a lot of these brands PR are able to get into the shows. Um, now they will tend to be um, 
independent designers, smaller brands. Uh, September, I got invited to a lot of shows at like um, that students were putting on as part of their undergrad or graduate program. So those are the kind of things that are gonna be on GPS radar. But the great part about it is that a lot of these brands are using the same PR companies year to year or they're sharing PR companies. And so once you get your foot in the door, once you get the, your name on the list, then it's only going to broaden as far as your reach is concerned. I always say this is the kind of industry that promises growth. Sorry, y'all, hold on. Hey, sorry, I'm back and there's a fire truck in the background. They won't let me be great today, y'all. Um, I always say that this is the kind of industry, as I was mentioning, that promises growth because it's rare that you would lose followers, right? It's, it's rare that your platform will just completely halt. <laughs> it will cease. It will not pass go. It will not collect $200. I mean, it, that, that doesn't happen. Even if you are gaining one follower a month, you're still gaining something, right? And so consistency is really the name of the game. And I think my consistency is beginning to pay off in a big way. And I'm so incredibly grateful for that. Um, now let's talk a bit about the expense. Because this is honestly one of the reasons why I also do not see myself going to fashion month until I have a very clear return on my investment or ROI because it is expensive and there's no two ways about that. Um, and um, for me, it is a justifiable business expense in the same way Target has a marketing department and so does the local bakery have somebody who maybe does their social media, right? You are investing in your brand. You are heightening your visibility. You are making connections. You are networking. It's just what it means to be in this space um, in a way that is professional and that aligns with your goals. Again, it is not necessary. I know plenty of people who have hundreds of thousands of followers, either here on YouTube or on IG, who love fashion, whose content is related to fashion and will never go to Fashion Week, ever. So it is not necessary, but again, it aligns with my goals around building camaraderie, community, sisterhood, all those things, as well as, of course, sharing with you all the trends of what I'm seeing as far as fashion is concerned. I love fashion. I love style. And so for those reasons, I, I justify the business expense, but I have to justify it to the degree that it's going to make sense because the way my savings and my check-in, they, how they set up and how they're connected, honey. <laughs> I ain't gonna be able to do it because I've heard it come out of people's mouths before. This is not me counting anybody's coins. I've heard people say that to do fashion month and to hit the circuit in all the cities, you looking at like 20, 30 bands, 20 to 30,000 in U.S. currency. I cannot justify the expense. And maybe what I will begin to do is like add weeks on. Um, but I also, I think, you know, if you're not new around these parts, you all probably know that I have a part of my business that has nothing to do with content creation. I am an equity consultant. I am an attorney by training. I have clients that I still show up for while I am doing this forward-facing work that you all see across the internet, right? So taking a month away from those clients, I don't know if that's even tenable. I don't, I don't even know if that would be an option for me because that work is so incredibly valuable and important um, for, for me. But let's say at some point I do decide to do it, I would have to find a way to mitigate expenses. And I did want to mention that uh, as something really important for folks who are interested in getting into this space, that not only do you have to think about travel, hotel, what you're going to wear, something that ate me up last fashion week was like Ubering getting around New York. I, I literally could have hired a driver for less um, because that starts to add up if you're there for a multi-day period. The other thing is because this is for me a business trip, I see this as a work trip, is that I need help with my content because I can't be the one that's in front of the camera vlogging, taking my own pictures, editing, putting the post in. It's too much. <laughs> 
So I've had to invest in people to help. So that looks like a photographer. It looks like somebody who's going to help me put together my reels. Um, if my admin team was not so far away and that would have been an additional expense, I would have loved to have, have had one of them, you know, come with me. And that may kind of get amplified as far as the kind of help I have in September because I do kind of see that as a bigger fashion month um, for whatever reason. I think that's true for the industry, but also true for the number of events and shows um, that I, I've seen just comparing things last year. Um, so maybe in September, my team will grow. I had people on the ground with me last September, which helped tremendously, tremendously. But for the most part, like I gotta say, it's no sleep, no eat. So another bus, then another bus, then another club. Like it is back to back for everybody. Um, and so, in order for me to continue to make the financial investment, um, I think that I need to get invited to more shows. As far as going out of the country, like in New York, I think I'm more than comfortable with at this point. Uh, I need to get invited to more shows. I need to get travel accommodations comped. I need to get clothing loaned. And those are all things that I'm sure can and will happen if I put my mind to it. But the reality is I'm not there at this point. That's the direction that I am headed. So as a result, I feel like I would just be going to take cute pictures. And, and I can do that in Virginia. I'm talking for me. And that is absolutely no shade, no tea. I'm talking to me as far as where my, my mindset is at. And those moments when I get FOMO and I'm like, damn, I wish I was there. I remember <laughs> that when my checking and my savings is, is, is linked, I need to be home. So <laughs> that is 100% trans parency that I'm having with y'all right now a real moment uh, let me know if you have any questions at all down below I can do a separate video all around fashion week or just the business of content creation I have a lot of resources that include this topic however uh in my solopreneur series so make sure you take a look at that if you want to know about what it means to work for yourself um, the last thing I'll say is that this season I gave myself a budget and that was for what I was going to wear, where I was going to stay, and the freelance support that I was going to receive. Obviously also trying to estimate as much as possible things like Uber, um, meals. Oh, and of course I had to also include my train ticket. I take the train to New York. I live in the DC Metro in Northern Virginia. So that number for me for this uh, fashion week um, was $3,000 and I'm happy to say I am under it even with my little few pieces that I just grabbed from Zara. Uh, definitely getting the pieces from Alice and Olivia loaned helps a lot because I was down at Saks and I that that outfit or whatever that look was going to be was going to be at least five six hundred dollars and no, you know, I don't have to wear Alice and Olivia, obviously, but it is my first presentation by a big brand. And I want to just, you know, show my gratitude and appreciation by wearing the brand's pieces. And so now that I get to uh, wear something that is borrowed, fan freaking tastic. okay? Hotels seem to be kind of on par. My train ticket was $200, which is a big help. I'll put all of my expenses here. Because this is going to be a good exercise even for me. Um, just to give you all a bit more insight and a little behind the scenes. But I've been talking a lot. I've been talking a whole lot. And I typically don't sit down and talk this much to the camera in a vlog. I like to keep things moving, keep things spicy, okay? So we'll see how much of this kind of fashion rant <laughs> stays in the video versus what gets cut. I don't want the video to be too long, but I'm also, as I mentioned already, not opposed to it being two videos. Okay, I said I said I was gonna stop talking, but I'm still talking. Let me get up out of here. Go on with my day. I am going to start packing. So then the next time that I see you all, that I talk to you all at least, I will be in New York.
looking at my roly girl I swear it's about that time we are getting ready to get up out of here but I wanted to show you my suitcase really really quickly I had planned to see y'all next in New York but I was like let me show them the new Samsonite so this is called the Elevation Plus, and I love it, y'all, because it is, as you can see, more wide than it is tall, and that is because on the inside is a place to hang your garments. As you can see, I'm already all packed. I want to make sure everything fit, and it does. Here are all of my looks for the next few days, and there's enough space underneath just unzip this y'all where I've also been able to pack additional things I am very very disciplined about packing for these types of things because the second I forget something it's gonna send me so I have like a sewing kit my ass don't sew but you never know what you might need extra do-rag tripod <laughs> my lint roller and on this side I haven't taken this off because I need to register my bag I have shoes and a few other things. So it holds a lot. Uh-oh. It holds quite a bit. This is all makeup, so let me take that out so I can put makeup on before I leave. Um, and then what you do is when you close it up, you just take all of these pieces. <clears throat> and I know this is getting something terribly wrinkled, but it'll be fine. I can always steam it at the hotel. And when you put this piece on top, the clothes automatically fold over. So the luggage was $250. I'll make sure to link it down below. Girl, let me tell you something about being a big age. You get to sweating and you ain't even hot. Okay. Flashing. So uh, <laughs> let me, uh, you know, dab my brow, or get this sweat off, and then I am going to beat my face because I wanted to check in and tell you all that my Alice and Olivia fitting is at four, which I may have mentioned yesterday. However, I was disciplined yesterday and actually mapped everything out that I have to do between Penn Station, the hotel, and the fitting. So I'm going to be going straight to the fitting and then from the fitting straight to the hotel only to change and then go out to dinner at 5.36 or so with Kassan and Tanika B. So y'all will see them soon, but you'll see all the fashion girls. Um, so that means I kind of need to be ready and I hate to put my makeup on this early. It's not even nine o'clock, but I know if I don't, the way these lashes are set up, I need at least 30 to 45 minutes for a full beat. So I'll just try to uh, make sure I have my setting powder. I have a new pressed powder by Laura Mercier. Dab, dab, dab. Refreshing where I need to, the lipstick, etc. But we got to put the look on for the whole day is what I'm trying to say, all right? Uh, so I'm about to do that. Close my luggage back up. And for real this time, the next time I see you will be in New York. Girl. This is the travel outfit. Come on, man. There's the appetizer. There's the main course. If this is the appetizer, I want you to think about what's in store for you in this vlog. Prada top, Saint Laurent blazer. This is a waist chain by Nature the Label. The abs been working on those. Sandra pants, which you all would have saw in my wardrobe basics refresh. I am wearing my Western boots from Zara because I don't have room for them in my suitcase. But tonight, if this gets worn, I would just put on a pair of heels. Um, new Bulgari micro bag to add a bit of color to the fit. I actually threw on it this chain, which is part of my Fendi micro bag here. I feel like every time I try to vlog, somebody is calling me. That is the travel fit. I'm early, um, which feels very strange for me, but this is the travel fit. I'm about to head out. Let me actually put my arms in the blazer because what I want to show you all is this coat. 
I'm very nervous about leaving my Bottega jacket <clears throat> because y'all know that's my baby, that's my heartbeat. And I feel like some point this weekend I might need it. But for space purposes, I feel like what I might need more is the blazer. I'm talking myself out of it, but I just don't have a whole lot of room. You know what I mean? But let me pop this collar, girl. Let me pop this. This is the appetizer. We arrived, and I'm saying we because I'm here with the one and the only. Hey. And so we, oh <laughs> we are together. Hey girl, oh, hey. did I, even, I didn't even press play. <laughs> We're on her vlog. We're like double vlogging. So <laughs> right. everybody's vlog that I yes. will be seeing this yes. week will actually be down below. All right, y'all. Yes. So we pulled up. The first stop is H and M. We'll show you around because this H and M up here is doing what needs to be done. And then we're gonna leave here and go to the Alice and Olivia showroom for my fitting appointment. Y'all come along. Alright guys, made to the Alice and Olivia showroom. I am trying on pieces for the show tomorrow. Let me show you the first option. It is a blue blazer and then I am wearing this really cool rib tank with rhinestones around it. But you've got to get into these jeans. Ignore the socks, please. I know. I'm just <laughs> All right, look number two. I think this one actually might be it. Let me have Kassan take pictures or hold the camera for me for some footage. Imagine it with a pair of gold shoes, a heel. We're gonna go up in the blazer and up in the pants because they are a bit tight. This is the size six and six that I'm wearing. We're gonna do eight and eight. Just so you all know, but I am obsessed with this, with the shoulder pads in the blazer. So stay tuned to see what I wear. 